For this edition of the Bolton Brief, uh, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is uh, Joshua Mammon. I'm the chair of the Young Fellows Association of the American College of Surgeons. And we're lucky today to have with us Dr. Oscar Serrano, who's an abdominal transplant and HPB surgeon at the Harvard Hospital and assistant professor of surgery at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. And we're speaking today with Dr. Serrano since he helped author one of the uh, important articles from the January Bolton of the American College of Surgeons entitled Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Leveling the Playing Field for Surgical Patients. So Dr. Serrano, uh, welcome, first of all. And uh, could you tell us a little bit on how you chose this topic uh, and, and what you learned uh, as you were researching uh, this article? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, it, writing the article was uh, quite enjoyable. Um, the, the way it uh, occurred, uh, it, it occurred, I think, very naturally among the um, individuals at the leadership level and the resident associate member uh, society uh, in that um, we wanted to highlight some of the inequities that uh, occur in healthcare, some of the inequities that are well known and that were brought to light uh, at a greater level with the COVID-19 pandemic. So I believe the, the idea got started around the summer. By then we had uh, a pretty good assessment of uh, what COVID uh, was doing to communities of color, communities that historically have been underserved. And so we, we wanted to write an article with the intent of highlighting what the college and what the, um, the young surgeons in, our, uh, in the college can do to better or to help these inequities. That's great. Uh, and really, you've broken this article out down into two major areas, which I think are, are really quite important to uh, highlight. Uh, the first area that you uh, spent some time discussing is surgeons as leaders in improving access to equitable care. And that was a lot of work that the college does with regards to quality programs and also work that uh, is done at the intra-institutional level. Can you first comment on the role that quality programs uh, might serve in improving uh, access to care and ensuring that there's equitable care? Yes. So I think the American College of Surgeons has created a, an excellent platform for us to study quality uh, as a metric of equality. Uh, we all know NISQIP, we all know uh, the database that uh, has led to many significant contributions in the literature, has led to many quality efforts around the country and even around the world. Um, and how surgeons can get involved at their local hospital with their within their local chapter is by being involved in these quality efforts. I think is starting at the most uh, organic level uh, when you're sitting at m and and you're um, noticing certain patterns about a particular population that comes in and is somehow being underserved in your hospital, I think this is a great way to start looking at how quality outcomes for those individuals compared to the rest of the population can significantly improve if we take a look at how they're being served, how to study uh, equality among uh, all populations that come into the hospital. Sure. And, and as a transplant surgeon, I think that quality is a particularly quality programs, I should say, is a particularly robust in the field of uh, transplantation. Could you speak a little bit on how you've seen uh, quality programs be used within your specialty and transplantation to ensure equity and, and to ensure excellent outcomes for everyone? Absolutely. So in, in transplantation, uh, access to care, uh, equality of care is extremely important. We know that transplantation as a uh, quaternary type of uh, service uh, is only gonna be accessible to everyone when we all pitch in and try to make populations equal. So for instance, a lot of work has been done um, with the, the African-American community. We know that African-Americans have a disproportionately higher rate of uh, end-stage renal disease because of a higher incidence of hypertension, uh, diabetes, and obesity. And we know that uh, these individuals don't tend to be referred for uh, nephrology care, pre-dialysis nephrology care, dialysis. And even when they're in dialysis, they don't get referred for transplantation. So for us in our community, in the transplant community, it has been very critical for us to be involved as surgeons, as uh, phys transplant physicians, to advocate for these communities so that everyone has equal access to care. Because in a sense, uh, we know that transplantation is the gold standard for end-stage renal disease. And we know that when an individual is transplanted, 
they are much uh, better off in terms of the quality of their life as well as the length of their life. And they can resume a normal life by going back to work, having a family. And so um, within our, our societies, we have uh, a very robust database that uh, is all inclusive. Uh, many individuals might know the Scientific Registry of Transplant Recipients, which basically records every transplant encounter in the United States. That means that every individual that is referred for transplantation that is transplanted and that is even evaluated for transplantation is recorded in that database. So many groups around the country have done extremely elegant work looking at what are the barriers to transplantation. I think the college has a very similar platform in Nisquip. Now we also know that Nisquip is not all inclusive because it would be a very large project. And so, um, however, as I said, when we start at the most granular level, if we start at our local hospitals, by taking pieces of NISQIP and then building on that, I think that gives uh, hospitals at least a platform to start these efforts. Fantastic. No, I, I think certainly uh, transplant can be a model that other specialties can use uh, to really uh, demonstrate uh, the commitment to equity. And particularly since uh, organs, uh, transplanted organs are, are uh, you know, in a sense, a public um, resource, um, they're shared public resource, uh, certainly that commitment to equity is even more important, as you've outlined. Right. Uh, you also mentioned, as I uh, had alluded to earlier, that the opportunity, in a sense, almost for a reset uh, to start fresh uh, in the post-COVID, hopefully in the soon-to-be uh, post-COVID era, in, in an institution's commitment uh, to equity. Uh, how could we as uh, younger surgeons be involved in that reset and, and trying to recommit our institutions and help our institutions recommit to equity? Well, I think it's incredibly important that uh, we start at the local level. Uh, just as we outlined in the paper, I think uh, physicians who are working within their healthcare system need to be involved at the quality meetings, at the M&Ms, need to attend the M&Ms and be vocal. Uh, I think uh, administrators can also be involved uh, and, and basically highlight some of these inequities. Um, I think the college provides, a, a, again, another excellent platform to um, uh, be an advocate. There's advocacy efforts at, at, at every level in our college. And I think many of those pieces we can take back to our home hospitals or institutions and utilize them to start something homegrown. Because I think at the end of the day, uh, the college doesn't aim to provide a one size fits all because every healthcare system is different. I think it gives us, it gives us the pieces to understand how healthcare works and how healthcare dollars are being spent. And um, taking some of those pieces back home and applying them specifically to your hospital system are probably the most efficient. Fantastic. Dr. Serrano, another kind of piece of the, um, the article that you wrote, it really had to do with policy. And it seems like with it's focused on regulations and laws and, and opportunities for younger surgeons to be involved in that uh, arena as well. Could you speak a little bit more about uh, how surgeons can be involved in policy and how that would relate to equity? Right. So I think one of the uh, most important uh, meetings that I went to as a resident was the leadership summit uh, put on by the college. Um, in that meeting, uh, it really opened up my eyes as to uh, how healthcare, how surgery, how surgeons fit into the puzzle of the overall healthcare system. Uh, I think that's one great avenue for uh, surgeons to be involved. The, 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 the summit occurs every year, although this year probably it didn't happen because of uh, COVID, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a two, three day um, uh, in seminar style institute that uh, helps uh, uh, physicians be learn a little bit more about what the college does at the government level. Um, many of us receive the emails asking our senators or representatives to speak on our behalf. And I think those efforts are extremely important because if we don't get involved at those levels, the big decisions, the big budgetary decisions are being made without our voice. And so that's one great venue that the college provides that we can uh, take advantage of. And, and, and again, it all goes back to taking it back to your healthcare system. So perhaps you may not uh, necessarily fit all the pieces from what you learn at the, at the national level, but um, if you go to your state chapters, uh, and then get involved with your state government officials. We often have our senators, our representatives come and visit the hospital and we give them walkthroughs the hospitals to see our COVID units, to see 
uh, our transplant unit, our cancer institute, to let them know how the healthcare dollars that they are advocating for are being spent. Fantastic. No, I, I echo your thoughts on the uh, Leadership and Advocacy Summit. And, and this year, as you pointed out, uh, we won't be able to meet in, in person, uh, but the college has created a virtual uh, Leadership and Advocacy Summit from May 15th to the 17th, uh, which I think will be uh, may, maybe not the in, same as the in-person experience, but I think it will still have a lot of this key elements of, of great, great talks about leadership in addition to strategies for advocacy. And there will be a a virtual Hill Day, in a sense, uh, which I've actually done with other organizations, and it actually works out pretty well, uh, the virtual Hill Day, in the sense that it sometimes seems easier to get your member of Congress uh, to be with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, when they are not having to run around everywhere all the time anyway, right. so because they're, they're a little bit more limited on where they can go right now anyway, just for because of the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, May 15th to 17th, so certainly signing up, I think, uh, as you alluded to, is a, is a really uh, great thing. Uh, any other points that you wanted to point out, uh, Dr. Serrano, from the uh, manuscript uh, that you would think th thought would be important to highlight? I think one of the most important elements uh, that we try to highlight and toward the end of the article was um, how young surgeons can get involved. Um, and, and this even goes beyond uh, 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 people who have finished surgical residency. This uh, involves residents, fellows, um, and, and obviously young members who have just finished uh, residency. I think we are realizing that uh, generations before us are in a sense, much more uh, forward thinking. They're much more open-minded. Um, I think uh, all of us can agree that uh, surgical training was very tough and at times archaic in uh, the views. I think um, our generation and the generation coming after us and those coming after them, they're much more open to um, uh, issues that regarding gender, uh, race, ethnicity, um, sexual preference. And so, uh, and, and those individuals truly are gonna be the ones who are gonna be fighting once we have finished uh, for those populations. So I think it was important for us to also point out that um, uh, equality is not just an issue of ethnicity or race. Uh, it's uh, also about gender. It's about uh, sexual orientation, religion. And so um, I think that was one of the points that we wanted to highlight in the article uh, and, and uh, really send it as a take home message for everyone to digest that the college is becoming much more inclusive. And we want to invite people who may have ideas as to how we can fix some of these problems. Well, Dr. Serrano, thank you very much for, for this conversation. And I really appreciate you highlighting some of these uh, key points uh, from your article. I, I really think it's a call to action uh, for all surgeons, not just younger surgeons, on how we can make a real impact uh, in favor of um, improving health equity for all of our patients. And, and certainly, I think you've highlighted some really phenomenal examples of, in a practical way, uh, how you've been able to do that at your own institution. Uh, so congratulations, Dr. Serrano. Thank you.